Liechtenstein is a state which defies history. It's a microstate located in Central Europe which has survived a great many times of strife. The Napoleonic Wars and the collapse of the Holy Roman Empire, the revolutions and nationalist movements of the 19th century, and of course, both world wars. The question is, how? How did such a tiny state not get absorbed by its larger neighbours? Well, to start, the Principality of Liechtenstein came into existence in 1719 when the Archduke of Austria and the Holy Roman Emperor combined the two settlements of Vaduz and Schellenberg, and these were under the control of Hans Adam of the House of Liechtenstein, hence the name. Now, the first threat to Liechtenstein's existence came in 1805 when Napoleon did an Austerlitz and defeated the Austrian Empire. Peace negotiations between the two saw the Prince of Liechtenstein, Johann Joseph, work on behalf of Austria. Johann was an extremely capable negotiator and also agreed with many of the reforms which Napoleon wanted to introduce. Thus, when another victory saw Napoleon put an end to the Holy Roman Empire and create the Confederation of the Rhine, he protected Liechtenstein from being incorporated into Bavaria. This is a big deal because the most powerful man in Europe had just declared that Liechtenstein was a sovereign state and nobody was going to argue with Napoleon at that point. So when Napoleon was defeated, Liechtenstein still survived. The reason why was that the Liechtenstein family had remained fiercely loyal to the Habsburgs. This is because the Liechtenstein signs lived in Vienna and most of them never set foot in their principality. As such, during the Congress of Vienna, Liechtenstein was never really under threat because their close friends were leading it. The next struggle came from the unification of Germany. Now, Liechtenstein was a part of the German Confederation which had succeeded the Holy Roman Empire. However, it had maintained its fierce loyalty to Austria and had opposed Prussian attempts at hegemony. Naturally, when the two went to war over who would dominate the rest of the German-speaking world, Liechtenstein sided with Austria. On one condition, its troops weren't allowed to fight their fellow Germans and so were placed on the border with Italy who had sided with Prussia. And once the dust was settled, Liechtenstein declared itself to be forever after permanently neutral. And Prussia made no effort to annex it into the new German Empire because it wasn't worth kicking up a fuss with Austria-Hungary over. After this, Liechtenstein remained close with Vienna and the Austrian krona became an official currency of the principality. And when World War I rocked up, Liechtenstein was in a tight spot. It was permanently neutral, but also it was economically aligned with Austria-Hungary and so it was sanctioned by the Entente for being so. However, the war itself never reached Liechtenstein, and in the following peace treaty of saint germain en laye in which they misspelled the country's name by the way, the Entente recognised its independence. And in the years following the First World War, Liechtenstein opted to align its economy with Switzerland and use the Swiss franc instead. So what about World War II? Surely the Nazis would have tried to grab it, right? After the Anschluss of Austria in 1938, there were many in Liechtenstein who also wanted to join Germany. Yet Germany never made an attempt to take the country. And the reason why was its close alignment with Switzerland. So Switzerland was economically cooperative with Germany and allowed them to circumvent some of the sanctions against them. Also, Liechtenstein's border was manned by Swiss soldiers and that would have made things a bit, well, shootier. Throughout the conflict, Germany had bigger fish to fry and so little Liechtenstein was spared the horrors of the Second World War. And so it was from here on after that Liechtenstein, by strategically allying itself with its neighbours and staying neutral, would remain independent thereafter. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my Patreon supporters James Bizanet, Colin Castleman, Danny Maloney, Marvin Cassell, Rob Waterhouse, John B. Gays, Mo, Aaron the White, Michael Reynolds, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, Gareth Turner, Mr. Show, Rashid Ali, Spinning Three Plates, Phil De Oink Oink, David Silverman, Izzy, Winston Kaywood, Maggie Pakskowski, Lexi Schwinn, Spencer Lightfoot, Kelly Moneymaker, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle and Anthony Beckett.